Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, dealership in San Diego for Vespa and Piaggio products, and ScooterWest.com for all things Vespa and Piaggio related. Check out our website, ScooterWest.com. Whether you own a vintage Vespa, a new Vespa, or any of the Piaggio rain scooters, we got you covered with in-stock parts. Uh, hopefully you watched the previous video, which is kind of covers all the different um, sections of the services you need to do on the BV350 or in other parts of the world, the Beverly 350 or they have the X8 350, MP3 350, real similar, same motor across all those scooters. Uh, in many ways, a very good motor. In some ways, uh, so it's okay. you know, got, had a couple teething problems. This is an earlier model, so, and I'll kind of point out some differences. Uh, right now we're going to go over to belt service. So every 20,000 kilometers or 12,000 miles is when Piaggio recommends changing the dry belt, replacement of the roller weights, uh, and I also recommend, they don't say it in the, the service manual, but uh, the, the clutch and final drive oil should be changed every 12,000 miles as well. Uh, one thing about these scooters, if they're used at highway speeds, well, the scooter goes over 90 miles an hour. I suspect most people own this, take it on the highway and at highway speeds. I found that oftentimes the belts won't even last till 12,000 miles. This scooter has about 10,500 or 11,000 miles since I've changed the belt. And I just kind of instinctively listen to my bikes and it hasn't sounded so good. It's been a little bit more noise than there normally should be from the transmission. The performance is kind of degrading. So I suspect I'm gonna uh, find some nasty treats under here in addition to the service. This scooter is nearly 24,000 miles. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the belt cover off and jump into what you do for the 12,000 mile belt service. So before you attempt this service, I highly recommend the factory tools. Just recently, I uh, had a customer of ours did his own belt and he didn't tighten the front pulley and it just destroyed everything in the motor, short of the crank, luckily, but uh, in the transmission that is, even the belt cover is completely melted. Uh, two tools you're gonna need, the front variator locking tool, and part number on this is 020442Y, that's an original Piaggio tool. Um, we have those specially made, the, the replacements that we have made are better quality than the Piaggio one. This is a Piaggio one right here, but it looks identical has a pair of pins. If you're working on scooters all the time, you'll find this, this tool is very useful for other jobs on other scooters, like holding the clutch bell, a lot of flywheels, they have a pair of pins that you can lock up with these two pins. A GY6 scooter, you know, base scooters. I don't know, GY6 is kind of a stupid term for a Honda base scooter, but uh, they use these style pins. And then for locking up the rear drive, which is located under this, um, um, cover, the rear driven pulley. So this part number for this locking tool is 020-917-Y. That's also a very important tool that you, you need. All right, the rest of the tools are just basic tools. I'll talk about them as I go, nothing special. Uh, I hope you have a full mechanics tool kit if you're gonna tackle this kind of job and not buying tools as you go. So let's get everything apart and jump into the job. So first of all, the air box has got to get loosened. Um, 12,000 mile service, you're going to be in there cleaning or replacing that air filter. It's a foam element. Um, I'll have that in one of the parts of the videos, not this part. This is all related to the transmission belt. And unfortunately, I'm not going to overhaul the clutch. That overhauling the clutch on this requires very specialized tools. Uh, it's quite a complicated uh, clutch. If you ever, uh, if you're a mechanic that's worked on automatic transmissions and seen bands and drums, it looks like one of the clutches that comes out of an automatic transmission, like a, um, a drum with lots of little shims and all sorts of fun stuff. I've had a lot of customers all over the place send me the clutches to rebuild because a complete replacement clutch, uh, as of 2019, they're, I think they're over $400 or nearly $400 for a complete clutch. So oftentimes it's more economical to replace the clutch. Uh, removing the two fasteners for the air box so I can lift the air box out of the way. Always useful to have a magnet, kind of pull the screws out. Two different size screws, uh, the um, 
the black one is in the front. I, I, I almost think they fit either one, but um, I just recommend putting them back where they were. This little plastic cap pries right off, uh, reveals more fasteners that use the eight millimeter socket or a T-handle, whatever you have. I like the T-handles, they're pretty quick, nearly as quick as using like a an impact tool to take these off. And just get them, get them spinning and you have these fasteners cracked and then loosened without any effort. So you got all those screws, keep track of all your screws coming out. That one in the front's kind of small or short. Uh, M5 uh, or an Allen key of five millimeters. This is again a T-handle style one. Big long uh, bolt goes through the middle. And what does this reveal under here? That's some acoustic padding. It's kind of absorbs dust. Um, this is a dry filter. If it's rotting, I would just uh, change out. This keeps dust out of the transmission. You do not oil this filter like you would like the engine air filter. You just blow this out with com compressed air. You can wash it with uh, soapy water and it, you know, with dish soap would work just as well. I'm not going to show how to do that. Pretty self-explanatory on cleaning that part. You got the belt cover, got fasteners all the way around uh, with the eight millimeter. And here's your locking tool for the, the driven pulley. So it just goes right in like such. Take a 15 millimeter socket. And I suggest having a long um, or a breaker bar or a large ratchet. And you're gonna turn the motor over until this engages and then loosens. You basically turn the whole engine over. Clutch is in a wet, wet bath. Most of the time, if you had other automatic scooters, the locking tool would be locking um, a clutch up, the clutch drum, so you can loosen typically a nut. But this is a little different setup. Got a washer on there. Just make sure that stays in place. Tool comes off. And I'll just go around loosening all the fasteners. All these are all the same size, fortunately. Let me crack that one. There you go, that one. And once they're loose or cracked, Here at the shop, I have a little slide hammer and I'll hook be behind any of these mounting points and give it a couple taps. Sometimes you get a screwdriver and a hammer and that will do the same thing. But typically, the, it will get stuck on the bearing as well. And before we go any further, I wanna check this bearing. Make sure there's no free play and it turns really smooth without any noise. If there's any noise on it, um, definitely wanna take care of it. You can put it on the shaft, kinda of listen to it. I uh, haven't really seen issues with a sealed bearing, but something to always check out anytime you're doing a service on these scooters. So I received one surprise here. The belt looks rather thin, along with its riding on the outside. I could see the belt is stretched and riding further on the pulley than it should. You see the, the belt right here is missing some of the outer teeth. Doesn't look so good. So you want to use the pin, pin tool. Cool thing about this pulley is it actually has the torque on there, uh, 120, 130 uh, newton meters. So you need a 21 millimeter socket. Go ahead and put it on the end of the crankshaft there. This is the variator. That's the driven pulley. And a couple of ways you can go about this. You can lock this up against like the center stand. Um, you know, or the ground, it's under a lot of torque. And you make sure it's all the way engaged into those two, two holes. So it's right there against the ground. I'm kind of doing it from the side, so I'm not getting, getting quite as good of uh, an angle on it. Make sure you don't bust your knuckles or get the tool uh, jammed. 
So there you go. I mean, another way to cheat it, it's just a big impact wrench would zap that off, but you wouldn't be able to properly torque that nut without this tool. So you got the large nut that pops off or comes off. You got this washer that goes on specifically this direction. It's got a dome to it and the dome kind of faces towards the inside. You can also see the wear marks from the, uh, where the nut's gone against it. And then you got a thin flat washer. So keep those all in order. This pulley should come right off the spline. So always check the splines. If there's any looseness, it'd be a time to replace this pulley. Let's check the condition of the pulley. There's no scratches in it. I do find a slight groove in there. This is like essentially like the top gear. It'd be like having a five speed manual transmission and top gear fifth and there's a little bit of a, a groove. There is a measurement for this, not very critical. If there's heavy grooves in this, it's time to replace this part. And typically along with the variator, I just replaced the whole entire variator. Uh, I think this still has quite a bit of service life. I would say if I was at 48,000 miles, it would definitely be uh, due for a, a new variator and outer fixed uh, dry pulley. There's another washer you gotta pull off. And next we'll get the driven pulley, which is spring loaded onto the belt. Pull that right off and disengage the belt. Now check this belt out. Look at that. It's just destroyed. The thing is completely wasted, not usable anymore. I can't believe I was riding this thing on a freeway up until uh, pulling this apart. 11,000 miles. So it didn't quite last what the interval says, 12,000 miles. So the driven pulley pulls right off the shaft that goes into the clutch. The clutch is located under this big cover. You can see another problem right here, but we'll talk about that next. Um, this is spring loaded. There's no grease leaking from it. It's not really all that rebuildable. I would just recommend replacing it. You can pull this cup up and pack the, the, the pins with grease. You can replace the upper seal and that's all you can do. If the pins are worn or it's leaking a lot of grease, unfortunately you gotta just buy a complete driven pulley for the BV 350, Beverly 350. Um, if you do wanna pack a little grease, you could pack a small amount of grease into these holes down this boss. Don't put too much grease in there, but we'll do that before we put it together. Uh, I don't suspect there's any issues. I don't see any leaked grease that's spread all over this. And this thing, I haven't seen too many issues. I have changes and we have sold these in our uh, web store to several customers, whether they're high miles or whatever. But uh, next you got the variator. So this pin pulls right out and it comes out of a centered bronze bushing. A lot of residue on this pin right here. We'll clean that up. Then the pulley or the, the variator or movable dry pulley, sometimes referred to as movable dry pulley, pulls right off. And I have my hands behind there kind of holding the whole thing. And rollers are just as old as the belt. They were replaced the same time as the belt. They look okay, but I'm gonna replace them because I could certainly tell you they're not gonna last another 12,000 miles. And we'll take this all apart. We're gonna clean it all up. And these rollers do go in a specific direction. Looks good under here. There's no oil leakage from the main seal. This little cap will come off and you can replace the main seal. Um, there's the oil. And no, there's not, there's a cam chain is also located under there. The problem I did do notice about the scooter is there's some leakage from the seal and I've heard a bearing noise from this transmission and I'm, I have an idea what it is. So the reason that seal is leaking is look at this shaft. I don't know if the camera picks up. There's a ball bearing right behind here and it has um, more play than it should. Uh, bearings always have a little bit of play. Um, I'm sure there's a spec for measuring this, but just from seeing these in the telltale that it's leaking, um, kind of gives me a very good indication that uh, we got a problem with the seal here. So before we get this cover off, uh, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna drain the final drive and clutch oil and located at the very bottom of this final drive assembly is a 14 millimeter drain bolt. So. Go ahead and crack that. This is a scooter specific oil pan. Uh, we'll get that under there, somehow prop it up. 
And I'll go ahead and unthread this bolt here, see how the oil looks. A little dirty. The one thing about these, they do have the wet clutch. They tend to pollute the oil. Um, doesn't take that much oil. Maybe it's even advisable to change every 6,000 miles. Uh, it's not specified by Piaggio, but maybe a good idea for um, if you want the, your scooter to last a lot longer. Um, but here at 12,000 miles, you can see it's um, a little bit dark. Usually on a gearbox alone, there's not much, um, you know, the oil is not all that dark typically. But. So on that drain bolt is a crush washer. I'd suggest replacing that. It's crush washer dash M10. I went over all the, the parts used on the first part of this, um, part of the video for the major service for the BB. So go ahead and replace that washer before you thread the drain bolt back in. So after all the oil's drained, we'll go ahead and tighten your drain plug. You know, just down to a couple drips were coming out. And just before, we're not even gonna fill the oil, but I'd always suggest taking out the fill plug because the problem is you take the drain plug out and you forget if you put oil back into the transmission. So leaving the drain bolt out is a good reminder that, um, or the fill bolt out, it's a good reminder that you have the um, oil drained out. Uh, we'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Just you can use a brake parts cleaner, uh, a little nylon bristle brush, nothing that special. But a normal transmission service, we wouldn't be taking this apart, but I wanted to replace the seal and the bearing. I don't think there's any issues with the clutch. The clutch, you don't service it until there's a problem with the clutch, such as slippage or, or excess noise. Um, I've just seen the plates burned up. I typically think the clutches are very durable on this. It's just if they're abused, um, like using the clutch to hold the, um, hold the scooter on a hill. Like you just want the clutch to do one thing, engage from a stop and that's it. And then thereafter you, it will, you know, disengage. There's no, um, you, you know, being in that friction zone is what's going to wear out your clutch. So just like the belt cover, a bunch of fasteners, use an eight millimeter uh, T-handle or socket. Go around and remove all those or crack them first. Different length than the belt cover, a little shorter. So all the fasteners are out, all the same length. So if you're unable to lever the cover off successfully. Keep in mind you don't want to just pry on these. They're very thin aluminum. Uh, you do have these pair of five millimeter uh, bosses right here. You can either put long threaded rods and use a steering wheel puller to put pressure against the uh, end of the shaft to remove the, um, the cover. Or I am putting a pair of screws and I have a small slide hammer, a very small one and go between the two and it will loosen up the cover. So you can see working between the two, you could carefully pull the cover off and it's almost there. So now the cover's popped off, a little bit more oil is gonna drain out. You know, I do have all the oil drained. And there's the bearing. So you can see it has more free play than it should. Go ahead and replace that with the OEM part and we're gonna replace the, the seal. O-ring, I definitely recommend replacement of the O-ring that's on the outside. So this is the complete clutch assembly. One thing about it is you can't pull it out. Uh, from the other side, there is a specific tool that locks up this clutch assembly. Uh, it is possible to get the clutch out without that tool. You'd take apart the final drive and you'd be able to um, dislodge this whole clutch assembly. And then there's a bunch of clips and shims and plates, all sorts of fun stuff in there uh, to rebuild the clutch. Uh, in this video, I'm not gonna go over rebuilding the clutch. As, as I suggested, not really necessary. Um, you may wanna send it to a competent, you know, competent workshop to rebuild it that has the factory tools to rebuild this clutch or just purchase a complete clutch assembly. Get the O-ring off, discard. 
And with the seals, there's specific tools to take seals out, or you could just use a flat blade screwdriver and carefully pry them out. I got uh, bearing presses to, to dry that out, or you could, in a pinch, you could find a socket that measures, you know, this works on the inner diameter, support this piece with wood, tap the bearing out. Uh, if you're having difficulty, I would recommend heating up this whole assembly. And when you put a new bearing in, you, you want to use a socket that's the outer diameter. The last thing you want to do is drive a bearing that's brand new from the inner race because what it will do, it will damage the, the races and or the balls and the bearing will prematurely wear out. So on that shaft bearing, you can definitely feel a little rocking of the inner race against the outer. A new bearing, there's almost no discernible uh, play in the race. So go ahead and get the bearing installed, pop the new seal, and get the cover back in place. So I have both the bearing tapped in place. I, of course, greased it all up. Uh, again, if you heat this cover up, the bearing's going to go in easier. Uh, I want to make sure it's perfectly square when you tap a bearing in with a drift. And same with the seal. Make sure it's perfectly square. Uh, go ahead and grease the lip of the seal along with the inner part of the bearing. And last but not least, we'll get the O-ring on the cover. And with this O-ring all the way around the whole perimeter, you want to uh, put a thin layer of grease so that O-ring slides into the cavity without, um, without cutting the O-ring. The shaft. I want to make sure that's very clean. Um, you can also put a little grease all around that. Protect the seal as we send the cover back home. So the cover goes like such. And just lines up on the shaft. And so what I found is you got to put all these screws back in and just carefully go between all the screws and that will bring the cover home, you know, seat the cover. Now you could tap it back into place. I, it's probably not worth doing. You're not going to get a very even um, torque on this cover here. Another thing to monitor is make sure the lip of the seal doesn't roll. You're watching, watching that. If the inner lip of the seal rolls, then you're going to have a leaky oil seal. And if you want to torque these with a torque wrench, about seven and a half foot pounds. Or with a, not necessary to really torque them, just don't over tighten them. And there we go. Got the cover all back together. Again, that wouldn't be necessary if you're just doing a basic belt replacement. Uh, don't worry about those noises because the this, this shaft, it may have side play, but when it's bolted to the cover, it's very quiet. But now there's almost no discernible play in the shaft, very little now compared to the way it was before. Now let's jump to putting the transmission back together. You can clean all these parts with a brake parts cleaner. It can be found pretty much anywhere. There's auto parts stores. Um, doesn't take much. Just all you want to do is get the residue out of the, um, the parts. You know, they got a lot of dust that builds up from the parts that wear out in there and just um, when it's uh, pulling the air through and just the rollers, it's clean all up.
don't want to get grease on any of these parts, these centered bronze bushings. Uh, make sure the boss is still pretty tight in there. There's a specification for it, but usually you see other parts of the barrier worn out before that. Uh, same with these things. I've seen these completely worn out. Um, just if anything has kind of a lot of free play or you hear more noise, uh, typically that's just time to change out the, uh, the variator. So we'll go ahead and clean the boss. Still looks good. There's some minor little um, scuffs in it, but you can't even feel those with the nails. My nails are so still, still completely acceptable. This, we're gonna throw all these uh, guides away and start with a new set of guides. I'm gonna just put the OEM roller weights. Again, there's like Melosi uh, barrier kits that work very well on these. And the mileage is gonna go downhill because the motor's gonna rev more, but you definitely get more performance out of them. Um, but the stock ones tend to wear the best in my experience. So take the rollers, they're sold individually, but packaged as an eight, eight pack. Uh, these variator rollers have both an open side and a closed side. Um, just remember, open faces clockwise. So if you're looking down clockwise, the open side faces. And drop, drop those in all the um, cavities all the way around. Kind of got a lot going on. I should be doing this on a workbench, but I'm used to working on a lift, so the limited space, no big deal. Take your guides. You're gonna need four guides. These are, uh, again, a wear item. And they only go in one direction. So the flat side kind of faces whatever the triangular side. They definitely fit a lot tighter than those other ones that just fell right off. You know, just from all the vibration and heat, that's what wears these parts out. So drop that right onto the variator and it should go up and down nice and freely. It feels perfect, It's no problem there. Um, this boss can go right in. It doesn't really matter which direction it goes, no grease goes on it. And then we'll go ahead and slide that right onto the, spot, the splines of the, um, the, the pulley. Another thing to do, uh, not 100% necessary, you could sand the surface of this. Just scuff it up with like 80 grit, just to give it, uh, take the shine off the surface. Same with this piece, you can clean it off, um, scuff it up. If you had a parts washer, you can clean all these parts where they look nearly new. It's not necessary that go as far as something like sandblast them. I wouldn't bother with doing that. But just taking the glaze off it is all you need to do. Help, helps with the new uh, belt, so it grips no problem. The flat washer that goes between the variator and the fixed half pulley, make sure you get that installed. You can clean this whole assembly with uh, either brake cleaner or compressed air. Not really necessary, it doesn't have a dry clutch that tends to pollute this whole thing. Uh, get quite a bit of service life out of this. So the Melosi belts have proven to be pretty good quality at, and they're less costly than the original belt. Uh, as with all these belts, they are directional. Everything turns in a counterclockwise uh, direction. And you could prove that by just turning your wheels. So going forward, you could see the shaft turns counterclockwise. This pulley will also turn counterclockwise. And you wanna take your pulley. This is under a ton of spring tension. I typically support it with my knees and See how I'm kind of turning this whole pulley? Then you can get the belt in there. And I want to get it as far as I can up into the, the V. So something like that. You can see it's pretty far into the V. And I'm holding the, the belt in place. We'll go ahead and slide this in. Maybe want to put a small amount of grease in there. Just enough to add a little bit to those uh, bushings. That are not leaking grease, so not really an issue. You don't want to add so much grease that leaks out and contaminates components inside your um, your belt cover. So, so you see the belts uh, right about at that position there. I'm going to put the pulley back on. Doesn't really matter what position on the splines. 
and just hold the belt away because you don't want to tighten against the belt. See how the belt's still loose? That's very important when you're tightening down any, any variator. Make sure the belt's loose. Because if you're tightening against the belt, you're not, you're not going to be able to get this uh, torque correctly. If you want, you could put um, blue Loctite on this. I typically, if they're torqued to the correct spe specification, all the hardware's in good condition, you're never going to have any problems with this coming loose. So. So we have the torque wrench set to 125 newton meters or about 93, 95 foot pounds. Uh, quite a bit of torque. You don't necessarily need a digital torque wrench, just a regular I-beam one. I have this tool on the surface of the lift and the tool is fully engaged. 70 foot pounds or newton meters. And you gotta make sure these parts We're almost there. There we go. So now that's torque to the correct, uh, correct torque there. So you want to turn the pulley a little bit to get the belt to drop into the pulley. All right. Now that we got the belt installed here on another bike, same difference, same BV350. Uh, now we're going to get on to putting the belt cover on. So a small dab of grease on this shaft that goes into the bearing on your driven pulley. Straightforward enough. Now it's time to pop the belt cover on. Let's get that uh, shaft lined up with the, um, the belt cover. One thing is if, if the belt's tensioned, it's a little difficult to get the belt cover on. Right now the belt's loose because it's a new belt. So just keep that in mind if you're struggling with the um, getting this cover on because the shaft is pulled ever so slightly and that can be an issue. So it's, it's seated all the way around. There's uh, two dowels that kind of line, line everything up. And now we'll get all the screws in. So they're all identical screws. Start from up here. Just go ahead and you know, place all the screws before you even start them. And the last one. Uh, FYI, these two screws, you leave them out, they're longer screws that go through the plastic cover as well. Take my T-handle, get them started. And again, you don't want to tighten them all the way. I'm just going back and forth between the different corners of the belt cover. And the last one here. So now that they're all uh, seated, just go back around. And with a, uh, if you want to torque them with a torque wrench, about uh, seven and a half foot pounds is adequate for these little screws. But I'm just going the T-handle, just giving them a little snug, you know, about what the normal torque should be for a six millimeter fastener that's going in aluminum. So nothing special here. Um, pretty much that's your aluminum belt covers on. So take your uh, plastic belt cover. Nice thing about the plastic belt cover, it does, serves two purposes. If the bike falls over, you damage a plastic cover and not this expensive aluminum cover. Um, and it also houses the air filter for the intake and has some noise deadening material in there to quiet up the bike a little bit. So you could replace this uh, foam filter. You don't oil this filter like you would an air filter for the engine. It's just a dried element, clean it all out. Got most of the dust off. Obviously there's some dog hairs on it, but that's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, just keeps the majority of dust out of your belt cover. And before you put this on, you do wanna torque this nut as well. So go ahead and make sure the washer's in place and thread that in, no Loctite needed. Get your 15 millimeter socket. And then you're not going to be able to turn it. You're going to need that special tool. And in the intro, I outlined all the, the part numbers for the tools that are needed for um, reassembly here. Go ahead and install that tool there. So this uh, nut, 10 millimeter nut, use a 15 millimeter socket. 
uh, gets torqued to around 55 foot-pounds, which is somewhere around like, I think, uh, 74, the 80 foot-pound, or newton meters. So 74 to 80 newton meters, around 55 foot-pounds. So we'll set our torque wrench up. A lot of times I want you to set it, I'll just watch the display as I, um, as I torque, torque something like this. No, no sense in programming in. And you can see the whole engine turns over until this locking tool comes into play. It will engage. Okay, there you go. So now it's engaged. There we go. So that's now torqued. And of course we torqued the front before you put it all together. This is uh, disastrous if you don't torque that. Now uh, you're ready for the plastic belt cover. So. I'd like to put this uh, long Allen in first, just. Five millimeter uh, Allen key, we'll tighten that up. Nothing special, just go ahead and tighten that. And you have the, the pair longer screws and the short screw. Uh, the short screw, the single short screw goes right in the rear. Sometimes you gotta um, move the belt cover around a little bit just to get that to line up. And up to the front, you got the pair of long screws. And there you go. So the belt cover's all installed. Remember the air filter, air box is um, uh, kind of dislocated from its two mounts. Pretty straightforward, just drops down onto those um, aluminum fingers of the, the body of the scooter. We'll go ahead and put the screws back in. There's the shorter screw and the longer, shorter black screw, the longer um, front screw. It's got a pair of washers, a star washer and a flat washer. Let's make sure that those are there. Kind of cheat, use a power driver, kind of just get it lined up. And one thing about these, you gotta, I always recommend just getting them uh, started. We tighten. So there we go. So go ahead and snap the little Piaggio nameplate in there. Uh, if you're, these are being stubborn, you put a small amount of grease on. They go into a pair of rubber plugs. Snaps right in. Now it's time to start it. See what happens. All right, sounds normal. Uh, that's one thing that's pretty normal on the BBs. They do have a lot of drag from that wet clutch, so it's normal for that tire to spin, but it's not so bad that I can't stop it with my hand. If it's dragging so much that you can't hold it back with your hand or it feels like the scooter's moving forward, you have problems with the clutch. Um, a lot bigger job to do that. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. I'm sure everything works fine. Transmission's all good to go for another 12,000 miles of easy riding. If you're riding this thing on a freeway, uh, balls out all the time, doing 80 miles an hour, I'd recommend changing it more like at 10,000 or 9,000 miles. So every 6,000 miles, 10,000 kilometers, recommend going in there and cleaning or replacing your air filter. Nice thing about these air filters, they're a foam element, so typically you can clean them. Uh, once they kind of age, they'll deteriorate and you'll want to replace it. Got a number two Phillips driver. Nice and easy, because I got a power driver here, but you gotta take extra care because all these screws go into plastic. So if you use a power driver, it's not set properly, it'll strip out the air box pretty easily. Screws are all staying behind, no big deal. And now the last one here. And you're probably asking what this little bubble's for. Uh, that collects like the excess oil from the air filter or blow by products, it's not filled right now. There's no oil dripping out of the air box, good thing. It's not full of a bunch of um, blow by oil. These are usually pretty good compared to the, the Vespa products that tend to collect a lot of blow by oil. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the cover over and get all the screws out. All the same, nothing to worry about there. We got the seven screws kind of have a coarse thread. Uh, we have those screws in stock if you ever need them. 
But here's the air filter. Nothing special. It looks really clean, actually. It's kind of hard to tell because it's a um, foam element that's gray. But see a little dirt kind of building up right where the little snorkel intake is. Um, this whole thing's uh, surrounded with foam. It just pulls right off the, um, the whole air box. No big deal there. So the back side has like a screen to kind of um, you know, hold back up the, the air filter element. And the way you want to clean these is you could use some type of soapy water or water-based uh, solvent, like Simply Green or, um, I don't know, Purple, the Zep Purple Cleaner, whatever de heavy duty uh, industrial degreaser works good on this. And I just wash it out. Uh, you could use the gasoline, it tends to break up the filter, we will clean it really good. Um, that's kind of the old fashioned way and I wouldn't really recommend doing that. I'd recommend like a water brace product. So pretty much spray this down. I'm gonna do it in the parts washer and it's a little easier because the parts washer is pretty much like a water-based soapy solution. Then I'll blow it out with air and put filter oil on it. So in our workshop, we got this uh, parts washer, which is water-based solvent. Pretty much simply green and water that's heated. Nothing special. Solution is pretty dirty, but this filter was uh, pretty clean to begin with. I kind of push the, um, the majority of the water out, kind of wring it out. You can't really twist this filter up like some filters. But it's not too critical. You don't need to get all the water out, but you want to get the vast majority of it and blow it out with uh, compressed air if you have that, or just let it dry in the sun. That would do the trick as well. So that's pretty much how you clean an um, air filter. You, you can even use di dish soap. It would work just as well. So. so I've tried a lot of different spray-on uh, air filter oils for foam elements. I'm being a big off-road desert guide riding dirt bikes. Uh, this is the one I like. Works the best. It's the tackiest. It's the easiest to use. Uh, we sell this. It's um, oil air filter. You can find it on our website. Uh, made in USA by Maxima Oil Company. Ironically, they're in San Diego, so kind of like them for that aspect as well. It's got a ball just like a rattle can. Super easy to use. I mean, there's a lot of people that you can mix up gear oil. There's so many ways to um, oil a filter. It's just that you can put gearbox oil, any type of thick oil, but this stuff is real stringy when it dries, so it, it works pretty good. So you see it's very thin when it goes on. And that's all you need. You don't need that much uh, for a filter like this. Also good to get it on the, the rubber frame of these BVs. Then I just massage it into the filter. And that's all you gotta do. So, And I didn't oil it so much as dripping out. That's a little bit of water that's still in the filter. No big deal, it's not gonna hurt the engine having a small amount of moisture going there. You ride on a humid day, there's moisture going through the filter. So just do it quick. Uh, there you go, you can kinda see a little bit of that blue is shining through on that um, white element. Also the back fire screen has kinda got a blue tint to it too, but that's about all the oil you really need. Um, for a filter that's pretty clean. Obviously if it was really dirty, you'd be spending a lot more time or just replacing this part. So pretty straightforward, pop the air filter back into place, kind of just goes right over those tabs. I miss the perimeter's uh, lightly greased or oiled. And pop the air filter back in and make sure that's all in place. Not really, you probably want to leave that there. It quiets up the bike. And I have the clutch set to the lightest setting on this power driver. Uh, normally I just recommend doing it by hand, but I'm familiar with this power driver and setting it to the lowest setting is, is all you need. So pretty much the screws, they just, once you seat them, that's all you need. They'll hold the, this belt cover or airbox cover on. And the last screw in the very front, and we're done. So two filters on the bike, the air filter for the engine and the belt cover filter, which I showed in the belt change.